we're doing the Copilio or something summit this morning with Willie and Cindy, Ivan and myself and it's a trail that Declan wanted to do before he left but we never had time because it's a bit of a drive just to get to the top of the trail and as we hired a car to get him to the airport yesterday to drop him off we thought ah let's go and do the trail but I said if we do it I will think of you every step of the way picture plants there they're a carnivorous plant they eat bugs and flies and insects that fly into them we experienced those first on Rebac Island in Malaysia and here they are at the top of this walk oh my goodness look at this Declan would love this though sorry Declan you would have loved this and I know you wanted to see the view so we have come On to see path. it for you <laughs> Slightly concerning, we're on our way back out to uh, Praline Island. Uh, we sailed half the way there and the wind dropped out, we had to start engines. And I decided to do both engines because I want to get there a bit quicker. And I hope that we can have a swim on the beach before the sun sets tonight. And I noticed a bit of smoke at port engine exhaust. So I backed off the engine a bit, kept started going, held that off for bits and the smoke just continued. Pulled back to neutral and the smoke's still coming out now. Just need to cool down. So you obviously need to check that out, something's going on there. I just put the engine in neutral, you can put it in neutral with not engaging the gearbox and just give it some revs, like revving the car in neutral, same thing. And um, that just seems to have cleared away the steam, so just running a bit more water through the system with no load on the motor. So that seemed to clear it up fairly quickly too actually. Whatever that means. Just seems it's probably just probably obviously there's just not enough water circulating through the system. There might be a blockage somewhere. Possibly in the heat exchanger, I'm guessing. Might have to take the heat exchanger off and have a look inside there. See if all the barrels are clear. Have a clean up in that and put it back together. It is evening and we are working on the boat. We're doing boat work. It's looking a bit industrial here, isn't it? With this look at this industrial, so we've included a bit of nature for you. Feast your eyes. For a wee while now, we have noticed that the port engine hasn't been pumping out enough water. So I changed the impeller, didn't seem to help at all. So I figured it could only be the heat exchanger has been blocked up, got blocked up a bit. So today I removed the heat exchanger from the engine. So here it is, this is the heat exchanger. It's an amazing system, it's very simple. You've got the coolant water and you've got the salt water, raw water from the ocean and the two never come in contact with each other but they transfer heat heat from the coolant water which is very hot ironically called coolant but it transfers the heat through to the cooler salt water that then leaves the boat a lot hotter taking that heat with it it's a great system and the main transfer occurs in this little part of the thing here called the heat exchanger and if you look closely here can you see how it's, the holes are blocked up in it a bit now i've got to take this hole exchanger out and we'll clean it up soak it overnight One. Ooh. crikey that's tight that's a bit too tight I reckon and the third one oh a bit of water in there that is relatively clean in there look right very clean actually only around the edges so that's not too bad this end is looking a bit better than the other end actually, to be fair, the holes are all looking pretty clear there. So now I've got to figure out how to knock this barrel out. The, we've got to get this thing off here I think, the um, spacer I suppose you call it. Oh, it's, it's actually st stuck on, okay that, that's not going to come off but the barrel is coming out. Here we go, ladies and jelly spoons, look at that. So what I'm going to do now is soak this. I've got some 
water here that I prepared earlier. I've got some uh, decalcification stuff. With this stuff you don't add the water to the descaler, you add the descaler to the water. So it's a ratio of 10 to 1. Fingers on it. There you go. So that boat. They came up to the back of here, I was sitting editing, and they were really close to the uh, handsom of the boat. Now they've decided they're going back into town. I don't know. So, um, I think they'll come inside. <laughs> anyway, this anchorage here in Victoria is a little bit, well, it's a lovely anchorage. We've got Eden Island right beside us, but it is known for boats being broke into. Before we arrived here in the Seychelles, there were two boats broken into here and then another boat that we know, Double Cove, had their outboard stolen off the back of their dinghy when they left it on a beach on the other side of the island I believe. Um, so yeah there's a lot of theft goes on from boats here and the dinghy's not on board but the door was open and the windows open. I think they came to see if there was anyone on board and I was sitting right there, I heard them coming, so I, I turned around and he did say hello. And then they just hung around. To me, they just looked really suspicious. Just Ivan and I on board. But we have, we've left the, I don't know, the freedom of Southeast Asia behind. The further west we go, the more we gotta expect those kind of things happening. It shouldn't be that way, should it? So the dilemma is this, we have a weather window approaching that we think is going to be okay to get to Tanzania. It's a really tricky passage. Just to add complication to the, uh, the formula, our Genoa, we haven't been able to re replace the Genoa. Without a Genoa, we have a potential problem with Bob, our auto helm because it's unbalanced. The, the, the Genoa helps balance the boat and makes it easier to auto steer. And in certain conditions, from the Maldives to here, Bob couldn't handle it and we had to motor sail and we had to hand steer at the same time. If we don't get it, we have to decide whether we push on anyway. The problem with that is if we have anything forward of the beam, or too far forward of the beam, we can't A, use the spinnaker with our main, or if the wind is too strong, we can't use the spinnaker at all. Whereas with the Genoa, we can reef that in accordingly and still head up into the wind. So we're, we're just going to see if we can pick up a second hand one here. So look, we're, we're going to need to get a new sail uh, to replace the old Genoa. Um, the prices we've had here are moonbeams. And uh, so we're going to try and get closer to maybe South Africa or because postage is a problem, timing of the postage we couldn't guarantee as well. We are looking urgently for a replacement, not all second hand one. You know, if we can get a Genoa, then we're off. So today Rob and I are going in to meet up with one of the captains off one of the charter boats here. They have second-hand sails that they keep as spares. And we're going to see if there's one that fits our boat just to get us to Tanzania. So this is the sail we've been offered. It hasn't been unfilled for over a year. In fact, we don't, he doesn't know, the guy who's showed us the sail doesn't even know when it was last used. He's just caretaking the boat. He's contacted the owner in France and they've said they'll take 7,000 rupees for it, rupees, which is about $750 New Zealand. This sail is in very, very bad condition. <laughs> it's actually ready for the dump. Um, there's a lot of holes in it, there's a lot of tears and things in that. But it could be good for us to get to Africa. So we're going to make an offer of uh, 2,000 rupiah, which is about just over 200 New Zealand dollars, and see what he thinks of that. I mean, I think the guy may contact the owner and say, look, this is worth nothing. It's not ideal. I like the tie-dye effect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
he said 700 before we'd unfurled it and when we unfurled it he went oh okay i didn't think it was gonna look like that yeah. it does look pretty sh but better than nothing so the critical thing now is whether the tape um at the furling end of things fits and it looks to me like it's the same size i think ours is five millimeter diameter this could be four probably possibly five even if it's four it should hopefully be okay Just as the guys start to pull it all up, the winds pick up and there's a rainstorm on its way. So we shall delay until after that. Is there any washing that can come in? So we have taken the heat exchanger out of the bucket and it is spotty dog it's clean as a whistle and the two end caps are looking absolutely spiffingly clean have a look at that can you see that oh look at that just like a bought one next thing i've got to do now i've bought new o-rings and i'm going to grease them up not too much grease i'm going to use winch grease i've checked that's okay but just a little bit of winch grease on the o-rings put them on and then we'll we'll be getting ready to reassemble it so that's way off O-ring. O-ring. So since we got the sail in, the wind's been coming and going and it's raining on and off. We still haven't been able to put up the sail to see if it actually fits on the force day. I've been doing a bit of work on the uh, heat exchanger, but I'm loath to get into the engine room now to fit it. So everything's kind of come to a bit of a grinding halt. So I'm going to suggest to Rachel we might, I've got a rental car, we might just go out for dinner. Let's do that, I reckon. Or maybe I'll go out and get a takeaway. It might be a better option if I can stay dry. <laughs> I'll go and sacrifice myself. Talk to me, Ivan. What's happened? Our window's broken. And I don't know who did it. I'm just trying to, if I find him, I'm gonna give a piece of my mind. Give him the bash. <laughs> so what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just really, if we burnt down that rabbit hole, we'd be here all day, wouldn't we? <laughs> Should I fill in the gaps for you? You Let's stood try. on it and broke it. But, no, that's <laughs> not quite how it happened. Well, it wouldn't be happening if you didn't tell me to hang out the laundry, so technically it's kind of your fault. You know? right. Could happen to anyone, it just happened to be me. Just happened to be you. Yeah. yeah. So it's sitting up slightly, like that. We know when we're putting the hatch down that you have to pull this rope out of the way, don't you? Yeah. So that when you stand on it, it doesn't break. So what did Ivan do? Yeah. Yeah. Now fortunately we have one spear and only one spear of those. So your next job after hanging out the washing is... I'll fix it. You look like you've nailed it. I'm sorry I didn't see you reattaching it. Feel, feel oh, now. look nice. Feel that now. Oh, oh, mate. Oh, that's beauty. Well done, Ivan. Yeah. Proud of you, boy. Proud. <laughs> Here we are, the day after, the day before, and now we're going to test out this beautiful, beautiful sail. I was speaking to Finn this morning. I said it looks like it's come off the Black Pearl. It's uh, yeah, yeah. kind of hody hum looking. But here we go. Beggars can't be choosers. So that is at the top of the mast. Oh, it's too long. About only a foot. Just. It's only about a foot yeah. too long. And, which is really surprising. It came off a 41 foot catamaran. But the interesting thing was that catamaran's got a really, it, the mast slopes back a long way. Like it's a really distinctive lean back on the mast, which makes that point from the bow that much longer and it has made a significant difference because of that lean back on the mast. So close. Look, I think it's, so it's pretty stuffed anyway. It's delaminated. You hear that? Yeah. You hear that inside? So what that, does that mean? The sail's delaminated completely. The whole sail is delaminated. So it's worth nothing. I'm not going to pay 200 bucks for that. 
but um, we may be able to spend 200 bucks getting it shortened at the top. I think you shorten it at the top rather than the bottom. That would be worth doing just to get a sale. I'm just looking at it now and there are so many little rips and things in it that if the wind got underneath those, I'm not sure what would happen. I don't know if this is more of a liability than a help, but I mean, it feels better to have a sail, but then is this the right one? Hey everyone, just wanted to say a massive thank you to all who've donated to the fundraising page for my rowing campaign this year. Massive, massive thank you. It's, it's actually crazy. Uh, it's incredible the generosity and all the lovely messages. And yeah, thank you so much. Now, as a part of that fundraising effort, we were running a little competition to get yourself in the draw to win a trip on the boat. So for each $10 donated, you receive one entry. Uh, so some people receive multiple entries, most people actually. What we're gonna do now is reveal who has won that trip. All right, the moment you've all been waiting for. We are about to draw the name out of the hat, so to speak. Got 1,322 entries. Wow. Okay, confirm. Start. Three, two, one. Amanda and Brinley Hancock. Oh! Well done, Amanda. We'll see you on the boat soon.